Welcome to the Burnout Podcast, where we discuss all things agile software development and delivery. We will be giving you an honest take on tools and techniques. We'll share our experiences, debunk myth, and hopefully provide needed inspiration. Hi, I'm Todd Anderson, Consultant Delivery Manager. I've done just about every job in IT, from tech support, programmer, network security, project and program management. I can't say I've done everything, but I've seen a lot. And I'm Marcel Bridge, digital consultant, business analyst and product owner. I've worked in digital before this even had a name, and since have been quite a bit around the block. And this is my way of giving back to the industry. So sit back, relax, and settle in for this week's episode. All right, hello. Today we're talking about engagement management slash account manager with Dave Hewitt. Dave, you want to introduce yourself? Okay, g'day. I'm uh, Dave Hewitt. I'm a partner engagement manager at Equal Experts uh, from New Zealand. Been living the dream in the UK for the last 25 years. Pretty much working worked in IT for my entire time over here. Started off as an analyst, moved through to project management as it was back then and then sort of delivery lead manager type roles um, ever since. Been with Equal Experts now for six years. Dave, um, what I usually ask is like, what do you say to your mum? What do you do on a day-to-day basis? Oh, IT stuff typically. Often I struggle a little bit to put my finger on what the role necessarily covers. And it's because it, it, it's, it's really wide-ranging and it's, not, it's quite nondescript, particularly I think the distinction between engagement manager and account manager, and I think the engagement role is, is, is much wider and broader as a thing. But primarily, if, I, if there's two things that I look, look for. One is making the client happy and two is making the team happy, and that's basically what I need to do. Can we talk about the, making the client happy? Because I've worked in agencies where making the client happy was like always saying yes, whining and dining the client, and I know that... That's not what you primarily need to. Just some of that, but <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It's 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 more than just always saying yes. It's actually quite the opposite. Possibly. So, so so making the client happy is primarily around delivery. It doesn't really matter what you say. Um, ultimately, the role is about what happens, and and mm. and that's not me. Obviously, that's a team thing. It's um, I don't actually. Um, whilst I get involved sometimes uh, on the delivery, it's about enabling the delivery team to do the job so they can actually get what the customer needs. Obviously, if you kind of the account manager thing saying yes, yes, yes. If you do that for too long, then you end up with a big smash at some point then you're not making the client happy. So it's making the client happy over time. Yeah, so so I guess that's interesting because you sit in that interesting space between sales, you know, upfront sales, and then you sort of take that forward. And then there's delivery, which is, there's a lot of overlap as well. But I think typically when the way I think of engagement management is that you're actually operating at that higher level, uh, you know, you're kind of that escalation point for the delivery team. The buck stops with you as far as you know making decisions on how to best engage with the client. I don't know what your thoughts are on the, those overlaps with kind of delivery and, and operating at that level and, and what the differences are. I mean, you, you mentioned about sort of sales. So if certainly if you start on the start with a new client and you're involved in the sales process, it certainly keeps you a lot more honest if you then have to take it through into delivery. Obviously, it's easy to oversell something if you're not the one who's gonna get your ass chewed. Uh, in six months' time, and you're not delivering. So I think that's that's certainly uh, important. Yes, and the other thing, which is about the levels, typically not always, but typically, is trying to be up that one one level up. So you're you're looking with the uh, the senior stakeholders mm-hmm. on the on the engagement. They've got somebody who can, they can either come and moan to or. Or whatever it is, if something's going wrong, or somebody, some if they want to escalate something within the organisation, they've got somebody to go to. But likewise for the team as well, if they've got they've got moans or gripes, or I guess sales doesn't end. Like even though maybe a salesperson might hand over to you, part of the engagement role is also looking for other opportunities to expand the team. But not not just for expansion's sake, but because the the client has a need that you're like okay well wait a minute yeah we can fit that niche they really have that need like yeah yeah because you're engaged and I I think and this again this is the difference between account management and engagement manager in my view you've got a little bit more credibility with the client about your delivery chops 
you can go on there, you've, you've probably shown that you've, you've got that capability. That allows the client to come and have real conversations with you. So it's, it's not necessarily sales or sales in the traditional sense. Oh, come on, you know, oh, I, I see you talking about that over there. We've got a team of experts who can do that. It's, it's much more about being available, being somebody, uh, a trusted advisor that the mm-hmm. client can use to ask questions and which might so happen to create more work for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but the credibility, the work, the sales, and all that hard work is actually done by the delivery teams doing what you said they're going to do in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a shit salesman. There's, there's no question about <laughs> that. But if you've got good delivery, then actually sales is a bit of a non-event because it just. Yeah, I was just about to ask about that because I'm not like, uh, maybe like what you just said. I'm not good at selling, but. I think there's a difference between a hard sale where you just try to convince the client to buy something which maybe they not, might not even need or offering the client help for an existing need where you're like, the client's like, I really need help with this. And you're like, well, I can, we can help you with this and that makes, creates a sales opportunity. And I think that's much easier, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's, that's a little bit the difference between organic growth and some hard sales guy in a shiny suit who's just yeah. trying to kind of flog stuff, which is, I think, not what we, what we don't do. And I, I don't think... It works that well. I think no, works. no. I think nobody, nobody wants to be part of that. <laughs> On either side, the clients don't want that sort of smarmy type sales process, and neither do we because we like to deliver stuff. I think that's yeah. the. Yeah. I think that's really the thing that that's important for our team. Dave, just a question around: Is my understanding correct that you would say your peers are effectively or quite often on the client side the sponsors of a project, and you are kind of then responsible in the organization where you work? as the guy who owns the budget, ultimately, finally. And um, so there is kind of a, a relationship at, at that level. And then, of course, you have your team that helps you to deliver against... Is, is that a fair assessment? In terms yeah, of you work yeah. With? so um, it, it does vary between different clients, for mm-hmm. sure. Obviously, the, the client that we've been working on together, that's it's very much CTO, VP of product, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, type engagement and that's the level that we're having the conversations with other clients sometimes it's more junior level particularly if it's a small engagement it might just be a delivery a delivery manager type type thing but it varies pretty well on scale of budget let's let's start talking about like what type, type of person makes a good engagement manager so first and foremost thick skin um because you take abuse from all levels and sides <laughs> and then no no no, 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 no. Um, I, and Actually, I'm going to say task switching. Being able to context switch a lot is enormously useful. A lot of people actually really struggle with the role because they struggle to task switch so frequently. I will go in a, in a day and if I've got two or three clients or, or whatever, um, I mean, at the moment I've only got one, but I've had up to seven or, or whatever, which is too many, by the way. But, you know, three or four clients might be a sort of max. And if you're one minute you're on a phone call with a client in one particular sector talking about DevOps. Another minute you're talking to a developer on a completely different domain about something. Then you're talking to a delivery lead doing this and then a BA doing that and and then a client. Oh, well, we're talking about finances now or we're talking about something else. So the level of task switching is is really, really high. And a lot of people struggle big time with that. So that'd be the one big skill that you kind of yeah. definitely need. Because to... I think it's interesting, right? You you said initially you have multiple clients, but it's not just switching domains. It's also switching within a client between, as you said, finance, delivery, Well, all the level, and, and instantly dropping into detail. Ah, right? that's so the other like, thing, as, yeah. As a delivery lead, yeah. I might be talking to you about the client that we're working on, and I might ask you a very detailed question about, you know, budgets are rolling on, people are rolling off people, and you need to instantly be able to get into that depth and understand mm-hmm. the context to help decision making and whatnot but like you say then you, you have to go in that depth right away in the next client in, in you know five minutes you yeah. can have a call with someone else and then you know re- remember the context and do that there's definitely one big part I, I think another specific. another thing delivery uh, or uh, engagement managers typically because they operate at that senior stakeholder level they're usually experienced people and they yes. and I, I would say they also have that delivery background probably predominantly yeah. uh, my colleagues from a delivery background mm-hmm. um, or, or I wouldn't say exclusively, but pretty is pretty close. To the vast majority of them are, mm-hmm. and I think there's a there's a large amount of overlap between delivery leads do and what engagement managers do. A high quality delivery lead, delivery manager type person can move into the engagement manager role without a problem. I'm told you can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
without without a problem. I, the only thing you might get bored of is some of the high, high level nonsense that you have to deal with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the other thing you've got to put up with. By the way, yeah, it's not just having a thick skin and task switching. Yeah. It's the it's some of the some of the noise and bollocks that you have to deal with outside of the project. But 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 it's not just the skill. Like you couldn't just have the delivery lead skill, but it's also the experience. So so sure. because you've seen so many things. Yes. That gives you credibility because you can go to a client and say, okay, you know, you're trying to do this cloud transformation or whatever. Well, I've seen that on this, this yes. other client three times, and here are some of the pitfalls or some of the mistakes that were made. And, and, and that also goes through, you know, the, the, the phases of delivery. The uh, woohoo, we just started, is awesome, everybody loves everybody, down to the, oh crap, we've got to do this delivery, it's real. Um, mm. Oh, we're pushing for our first release. That pain up to it's all done, or, or we've you know we've we're through that pain now. We're on to I don't know doing some smaller features or whatever. It's also knowing that actually it'll all be right, you know, because you've got the scars, you've got the the mental uh, model that means that 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 stuff, that shit, that bad times going to be passing, and there's going to mm. be some more good times, etc. So having that mental fortitude and having that experience, that gives you that mental fortitude mm. to go through some of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when we do these things, we sort of talk about what tools you use, but I suppose engagement managers kind of are living in the world of really the office tools, stuff like spreadsheets and Word docs and email and things like that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yes, uh, very much all that, all that. So so the tools and techniques that you might use on a delivery team are equally useful for how you... For like roadmap planning yeah, and yeah, yeah, Jira well, and that sort of thing. Yeah, 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 kind of being able to go in and run a retro for a for a team, for example. So quite often in the past, I've, I'll go into client teams and um, help them run a retro. Or whatever. But having those kind of tools are important. It helps you get close and keep close to what's going on in teams. And If there was somebody coming up who wanted to be an engagement manager, maybe maybe they are a delivery lead or something, they want to step into that world or, or whatnot, what, what advice do you think you'd give them? Like what, what things should they do? Um, it's the main thing that we talk about with people is... The context switching I, I really think that's a lot of people just don't um, appreciate how big a challenge they might find that and also it's actually quite hard to step away from delivery and again I know probably being far too hands-on on a current project but often you're not that hands-on and if you really like delivery that's actually quite hard because you kind of say, no, I want to get involved, I want to get involved, and I can't get involved, I shouldn't get involved. And so having sometimes to step back and, okay, like these guys have got it, it's okay, is uh, something that you you might end up missing if you're going from that sort of a real delivery. I've got a, I've got a product that comes out at the end, mm-hmm. and that's awesome, and it's my, it's my doing. As an engagement manager, you, you sometimes don't get that. It's mm. You've been involved, but you've not really done it. Done right? it. Yeah. I mean, do you think, I think we spoke about this maybe a while ago, um, how important is it to understand what's important and what's not important, what's risky, what's not risky? Because I think that makes a big difference between a junior and someone who's experienced. Yeah, yeah. being able to tell what's just normal noise versus uh, yeah. what's actually important to the client, I think that's, a, that's a, something you've really got to pick up on. Because there's some things that the client says and you get, yeah, we're, Two weeks' time, everybody's forgotten about it, don't worry about it. We're just sort of, yes, 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 that's great. Um, listen, respectfully, obviously. But, you know, you, you, you kind of know that's going to go away because it's just noise. And there's other things you pick up on and you go, he's just said one sentence or a couple of words over there and you think, oh, crap, we need to sort that out. And that's really, really, really important because it's been able to navigate you through yourself through and put yourself into the client's shoes and really understand for them what what they care about most. And so once you've got that empathy with the business and the huge, client, huge, yeah, yeah. and your team, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you could say that something that you don't want to do, or, or sort of something you that you would not want to do, is is sort of chase every single opportunity or detail because it might not actually be a thing, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's filled. It's, it's the uh, the ability to filter stuff out. But I know everybody does it, and but they do it in different ways. As an engagement manager, it's much more breadth. It should be much more breadth mm-hmm. than particular depth, but being able to be being able to touch on a number of the different things, whether it's delivery, analysis, DevOps, I don't know, some technical thing or, or whatever, being able to have that breadth to think, uh, that's important. Might not know the detail of it, but I know that's important and then 
being able to chase that down with somebody who actually does know what they're talking about. And, and do, you, do you have any specific techniques that you've developed that might be useful to share as far as trying to manage this context switch or anything? Or is it just straight, straight up short-term memory? Or No, no, no. It's a straight, I, think it's, I think it's something that you do practice. I think it's a practice thing. It's, it's a skill you can develop. It's a skill you can develop for sure. Because engagement um, management isn't a role where you like study this, get, come out of uni and you're an engagement manager. No, That's not no. how it works, right? No, no. And it's not a, it's not a, it's not a um, Prince 2 or what was the one above that? Uh, the, PMI. Yeah, yeah, or whatever, whatever, whatever yeah. the program level of that sort of thing. You, it's, not, it's not about going and doing that because obviously here it's all agile practices and the agile practices typically roll up anyway. So you're just doing a higher level of the same stuff or applying the higher level of the same stuff. But what does your typical day look like if somebody were to say, you know, what do you do day in, day out? Maybe we covered that. There is no typical day, really. Um, again, it, it really, really depends on which clients you're working with. You know, the one we're on at the moment is very hands-on. Um, sorry, Todd. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, apologies. <clears throat> now, uh, it's, yeah, so it's, it's much more hands-on and it's much more focused than... It, it is actually much more detailed. Again, sorry, Todd, and sorry, myself. Um, but if I get the job done, I guess, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's yeah. the thing, right? Yeah. Um, but other ones, you barely have any interaction with. Uh, it's because it's either, it's either very small. I mean, the one we worked on... and I didn't see you at all, really. Yeah. I mean, I had a couple of catch-ups, and it was like, oh, this is all going fine. And you're like, well, then I'll fuck off, off again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. this is totally cool, right? Whereas on this project at the moment, I think it's all hands on deck and we do whatever is needed to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and, and I think, you know, I think you said earlier, like the sales process might be sort of whining. I mean, there is an element of that whining and dining, though, with the engagement manager role. Like, for instance, we're going to go on a trip out overseas pretty soon, and, and there'll definitely be some of that face to face. Yeah, relationship relating that to what yeah. <laughs> well it's, it work hard play hard right so, yeah. there, but there is going to be some of that face to face re- relationship building if, if I put in air quotes I guess which is yeah, important yeah. though relationship it? management a yeah. relationship having relationships with people is 95% I should have said this at the beginning is 95% of the job and it doesn't matter whether it's a client or um, individuals on the team or whatever it's all about it's, it's ultimately about relationships most of the time sitting on the phone talking to people and if it's a team member you know you get a lot of pastoral care I think a lot of people term it the amount of people who just come over and you sit down and have and they have a moan and a bitch at you <laughs> uh, but that's important right that's a hugely important part of the role yeah. it's just having a chat with somebody and they they have a bit of a moan you have a bit of conversation about why they're moaning etc and effectively just ask lots of questions and then they go away and, and it's, it's fine. You actually don't do anything more than that. You just listen. You just listen. Yeah, and, 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 and it's yeah. it's massively important. You know, mm-hmm. you're almost an yeah, amateur psychologist. And, 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 I was yeah, supposed to be like the priest, kind of, when you go to confession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and actually, this, often that happens on both sides. It's, it's the team as well as the client. Is the client will come and oh god that other department are completely pissing me off that happens all the time the team and making people feel appreciated and that I don't know if you have any thoughts on some of that no other than I should do it more um, <laughs> yeah we should all do it more I yeah think. That's a, yeah it's, that's, a, it's a thing that is like yeah when you're in the churn of delivery and you're, you're trying to get yeah. things out and, and problems are popping up and you're bashing them down it's really easy to yeah. sometimes forget some of that yeah no, it is easy to forget about it and it be it's something that we should do more I mean a lot of people particularly when you work with senior people that you know they've got families they've got what I've said so doing the doing the after after school there is um, often a little bit more difficult for people but being able to go out with a client being able to have a just a conversation in a, in a relaxed atmosphere where there is no pretense about you know there's, it's what you often talk about work you, you you're not it's a very different setting and that's really important. I think so. you get a lot of information. I don't mean like illegal insider stuff, but you get a lot of information over a drink that is between the lines that's maybe Absolutely. more emotional and the client is telling you things they, they worry about. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is super important context for the work. Completely. Um, and, then, and, and going back to the sort of the, the other thing about empathy, you know, if, unless you know what they worry about, yes. it's really, really hard to serve their needs properly. Yeah. You know, if this is if this is the most important thing, Todd and I were had a meeting um, earlier in the week, and it was very very clear that there was one objective that the the client wanted to to, to focus on, and 
that's now clear to us. So this is this is what we need to make sure we unblock so they can so we can help them achieve that objective better. But last Friday that wasn't abundantly clear. We we assumed there was definitely that it was there, but now we know, and that's we can help the client. Yeah, if, if you don't know, there's not, you can't do anything about yeah, it. Yeah, right? and it's also super important for the team because otherwise the team feels like they're being messed about by the client constantly changing their mind. Whereas yeah. if you're like, oh, there is a reason for this. Yes. And yes, maybe we all suffer from it, but there is still a good reason. It's like, oh, okay, I can make compromises, shortcuts, whatever. Yeah. Because there is there is value in this, and then you you're less frustrated. With yeah, it. and I, and I think actually something which again we should have done earlier in this in this project, but we've recently started doing it on a sort of a weekly cadence is just sitting down and giving a state of the nation with the with the engagement with the the, the team, and just kind of saying this is what I know, you know, no, yes. um, without. That, yeah, I uh, think that's definitely it's something. Transparency, we're, we're, right? That's yeah, what it it's transparency, right? Yeah, it's transparency, but it's it's just remembering to do that, and that's yeah. it's usually an important part of the um, of the the role. It's <laughs> you've got to remember to do it, um, but if you do it, it's just talking openly, and honestly, and just say, "This is what I know." And, and letting them ask questions and having the Q and A time. Yeah, that's just with the team without the client present yeah. necessarily, so you can mm-hmm. be really open and honest. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a slightly different question? A bit of a pivot. Industry domain experience. How important is that, or is what you do a transferable skill? I, I mean, I, okay, we're in IT, so I, I could imagine that going to a totally different industry, like medical, might be a bit different. But within IT, different clients. I mean, I know other people will disagree with this. Having specific domain experiences, I don't think it's as important as everybody makes it out I to be. I would agree with that. Why do you think that is? I agree, but. Because one. Most domains I've operated in aren't as complicated as people think they are. And, you know, we've worked in, and I've had the privilege of working in, in many, many different domains, retail, um, trading, uh, um, telcos, banking. I had a real good view of a whole, whole lot of things that people have said, this is really, really complex, this domain. And yes, it's hard, and yes, there are nuances to it, mm-hmm. But most of them, unless you're dealing with really, really edge cases of I don't know, high, really, really high throughput um, systems, for example, if you've got if you're dealing with a hundred thousand transactions a second, actually you might have to have some real specialist knowledge or whatever to to solve yeah. those particular problems. But ultimately, if you're dealing with energy trading versus some sort of specialism in banking. You can pick up, you can pick up that knowledge, and the same is true with the engagement role. Yes, it's good to be able to walk into it from a sales point of view. It's actually it's useful. Yes, um, because it buys your credibility in the sense of I can walk in and I can talk about oh, I've done this in banking. You know the jargon, right? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. done this in energy trading. I've done this here, or whatever. Um, so that's that's mm. that's super important. So from that perspective, but when it comes to implementation. I'm less convinced that there's it's a real thing. Interesting. I think we may have had that discussion before because I feel like a lot of the times IT is, in 90% of the cases, is moving data from one side to the other. And only rarely is it actually a super difficult, complex problem, as in like, you know, kind of building some AI thing is maybe hard. But most of the stuff we do is moving data, really. So the challenge, I think, is more around the political side. Yeah, so so actually, I think that's, that's a good shout because working in... Banking and finance has its own political the history that that regulatory yeah yeah so, so all that stuff yeah and, and and different different industries come from a different place in that sense and I think understanding that context is really really important so you know, take banking if you've got PCI DSS for example um, then you need to go through that actually being able to understand that's the position that the the customer or the client is coming from and. And this is why they are asking these particular questions. Is obviously important being to have the knowledge and coming, being able to reflect back and understanding it. it doesn't necessarily mean the way, the way they're doing it is correct. It just means it's been having the empathy and understanding. That's why they have an attitude yeah, yeah. to risk or whatever. Yeah, it's because of yes, yes. yes. Yeah, and I, and I think you make a point about politics is sort of, and I think this is also an engagement manager trait, is that you need to be able to recognize when to say things, when not to say things, <laughs> when to sort of hold back and have that restraint and, and, and not just blurt out whatever is in your mind. I think that's definitely the better engagement managers have that sort of political sense uh-huh. of like, okay, well, these other relationships, there, there might be the client has some internal relationships and I need yeah. to know to say that to that person, but not in front of that person and yeah. maybe take that person out for beer later to talk about that thing because that's the way you engage with that person. It can be the wrong thing to necessarily blurt out, you know, if you're in a, a weekly steering meeting with all the senior stakeholders and there and, and 
you blurt a certain thing out, then that might not be the right ferret for him. Having going, having conversations straight after and saying, look, what about this? Or, mm. hey, you know, you forgot about this here. Then that's a much more gentle way of doing it. What you don't want to do is call out people in front of other people. And that, I mean, that's basic politics, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or basic human dignity in, in a way. <laughs> well, you, is, don't want make, yeah. you don't want to make people look like dicks in front of other people. Right? Well, and, and also if your intentions are pure that you want to, you'll have the same goal, goal and you're going in the right direction. Yeah. And yeah, it's sort of like all that's... Yeah, yeah, and I, I do, I definitely take the approach, and this is probably in my nature, that people are trying to do the right thing. They're not trying to be awkward when they sound like they've been awkward or, or whatever. They really genuinely believe they're doing the right thing for the organisation. And if you go in with that attitude, then mm. you're much more likely to, again, one, have an empathy with what they are, but two, be able to engage in a conversation, listen to what they what their world view is, and then make a, make a comment about what you think or what... Why they should maybe change or yeah, not? Yeah, or, or, yeah exactly. Or, or have like you thought help. about have, yes. have you thought about doing it like this here? Or um, you know that, that's that's a that's pretty important. So I think we should start wrapping this up. So I mean, is there anything sort of inspirational you can say to somebody that want would want to get into engagement manager <laughs> yeah, or, right? or something? You know, like <laughs> have them give it a try. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, we would love more people. I mean, there's a little pitch for uh, EE. We'd love more people to come and try doing doing the engagement role. It can be, this isn't so inspirational, it's probably just something, it can be a little bit lonely as an engagement manager because you're not necessarily part of part of the team all the time, you know, because sometimes you're, you're not involved enough or whatever it can be but it can also be very re- uh, rewarding as a role just because you get to see you get a real you get a real sense of breadth you, re- you get to see so many different implementations mm. across so many different clients across so many different domains it means you can start to build up a real view of what good looks like and what great looks like and what what things you can move to make a delivery more successful and you start to get an appreciation of those sort of things that you don't necessarily get when you're right down in the weeds all the time. So you get that you get that opportunity to sit up, look across things uh, much more successfully. Great. Well, thank you very much, Dave. Cool. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. That's it for today's episode. Have a look at our show notes with related information and details on how to get in touch at thebarnup.com. We are listener-driven, so please do send us your questions, comments, and ideas for new episodes. We're both practitioners and are happy to discuss interesting opportunities from consulting to coaching to getting involved in actual projects. For inquiries, please visit burnupmedia.com. This podcast is produced by Burnup Media Limited under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 license, which means you can share it as long as you give credit, but you cannot change it or make money of it. Until next time, thanks again for listening and have a wonderful day.